Uh, for those uh, li- while you were listening, watching the congressman, you might have noticed something kind of funky going on at the corner of Wall and Broad. Huge losses and now turned into barely losses at all. The Dow down about 18 points right now. Technology led the way. We were seeing that in a couple of technology issues, uh, Facebook, uh, Netflix, some others. Um, and that might have had a cascading effect. But a lot of this has to do with states that, by and large, are sticking to their planned reopening uh, measures here. Uh, a couple, Utah and Oregon, are among those that might put it off. But not a one, not a one yet has uh, thought about reversing any of that or taking some back or reinstituting sheltering provisions. That would be an extreme measure that, obviously, if you're in the market, and you're just big on the economy, improving and making money, you don't want to see. Uh, but that seems to be mitigating some of this. David Benson following all of this from the Benson Group. He's the CIO uh, uh, there. You know, David, one thing that's interesting, and I notice a lot of the, I call them virus-sensitive stocks, um, you know, the, the airlines, uh, the entertainment stocks, uh, the, the leisure stocks, uh, even some of the cruise stocks have come well off their lows. What's going on here? Well, see, the whole sector, uh, I mean, not just the airlines, not just the cruises, but what you're calling the kind of COVID sensitive areas, they have an awful lot of speculation. And so you're, you're getting a lot of players that are in for a short period of time, and that can boost returns. You can get a quick buck, but it also is going to enhance volatility substantially. So it's a bit different than what I would consider to be the more reliable and stable way to kind of play the next stage of market improvement. Um, but, and it doesn't really tell you a lot about the fundamentals of this uh, space. Um, it does tell you a little bit about how much the virus still weighs on people's minds as, as both, uh, you know, an economic and health issue. And I'm wondering when that was called into doubt that maybe, an, uh, you know, a, a spike in cases, whether it's, a, you know, a serious spike or not, just the thought that it could delay these re- reopenings, David, struck me as something that Wall Street is very much attuned to, you know. Well, Neil, I barely ever disagree with you. So will you limit, let me do so just this one time? Please, I, please. I think that what... And we're prepared to cut I your mic. That, we are prepared to cut your mic, but go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes. I deal with that at home as well. Here's the thing, Neil. Um, <laughs> why did mortgages, why did mortgage bonds go up throughout this sort of second wave fear over the last few days? Why did credit spreads not expand barely whatsoever? Uh, Why did most risk assets not fall off that are just as sensitive as some of these kind of retail oriented and travel and hospitality stocks did? I think if there was a real Wall Street sensitivity, fundamental economic concern about this uh, very outlier data that they're seeing around the so-called second wave uh, clickbait of many news websites, I honestly believe it would have been a more broad and more democratic effect into markets. Instead, it was very limited into certain equity markets that, by the way, had already gone up 2,500 points in the nine days beforehand. So I just am not totally convinced that it's Wall Street being real sensitive to the reopening realities as much as there are some hands that are are quick to get out of these stocks. And, and that's what I think you're seeing right now in some of these more vulnerable sectors. What about the, 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 the whole economic argument, David? And that's been out there a while. I mean, what kind of a return to normalcy or whatever people are calling it? Are we likely to see? You've heard the V-shaped argument. I've heard the U-shaped argument. I've heard the L-shaped argument. I don't even follow the letters, but I do know that there was optimism that it could be pretty pretty smart. In other words, it could be pretty striking. Where are you on the degree of improvement we see? What I'm trying to do right now, because I'm not back in New York yet, um, and I'm here in Southern California, where anybody walking around the, the restaurants and the bars and the stores and everything that's kind of reopened, the beaches, would be a V-shaped person. Because it's just simply uh, uncanny how normal things got very quickly. And I recognize that other parts of the country are not feeling the same way. And so I don't think people should form an investment outlook or an economic perspective on what's happening right in their own community. We're in sort of that square root camp. And I know the different shapes are all kind of annoying. But I think that there's going to be a very quick and very robust economic recovery. But then it sort of teeters off and becomes. 
slower burn for that final grind of recovery. I think that's the most logical. And I also think that everybody, including myself, doesn't know. We've never been through something like this before. So for the people to uh, speculate exactly how it's going to play out, I think is very unwise. What we know is it's going to come back in a much different way than most recessions come because what started this recession is very different than how most start. David, always a pleasure. And it was great having you for your final appearance uh, with me on, on this number. Um, but you're the best, my friend. Thank you very, very much uh, for putting all of this in perspective. Brilliantly, as always.